I have a theory. Okay, I have a theory. I know it's hard to believe that I actually have a brain and have a theory here. But see, here's the thing. You know, we get killed because we got rid of Amari Cooper, right? They say, oh, the Cowboys don't care about winning. They got rid of Amari Cooper, right? Yeah, but if... if and didn't replace him. Now, but, I will get it, and I say, you know, I'd like to have another veteran wide receiver here. Yeah, but his here. foot is as bad as we think it was. Well... And that, that at least we got something for him. Okay, but hold on. How come Kansas City doesn't get killed for getting rid of Tariq Hill? What did they get in return? They got draft picks, but you still did not replace that weapon of Tariq Hill. You know, he's one of the baddest guys out there. How come they didn't get killed and say they don't care about winning? They got rid of Tariq Hill. How are you going to replace that guy? I dare say Tariq Hill is harder to replace than Amari Cooper. Yeah, because that or, 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 that press guy makes wide receivers better. Or or hold on, so, hold on. Or hold on. How about the Green Bay Packers getting rid of Devontae Adams? They don't say, well, the Green Bay Packers don't care about winning, do they? And and we already heard Aaron Rodgers basically saying, You guys are ass and gotta play better, or else I'm not throwing you the ball. <laughs> I'm gonna take my ball and go home, right? They don't tell you that they don't care about winning. That, you know, I haven't heard anybody say that Green Bay is going to take steps back. Have you? I haven't heard anybody say Kansas City, even though everybody else in their division has gotten better. I haven't heard anybody say that Kansas City is going to take a step back, right? Even though they probably will. Okay. Could this be, after seeing what I saw Saturday with the Cowboys doing 12 personnel, DMV, man, DMV, my so, apologies. So, so he said, so DMV said that the Chiefs drafted a wide receiver. It's our two solid veterans. Okay, but you know what? <laughs> but hold on. We drafted Jake Ferguson, right? Right, yeah, right. He actually looked good. See, see, and Jake this is, Ferguson it, it, actually looked good. Hold on, hold on. Here's my, my philosophy he here. Okay, it's because when I look back, when I look back at all of the last past Super Bowl teams for like the 12, 13 years, you know what the thing, one of the things that's been key with all of them? Tight end. Great tight ends. I've Gronk. seen I've seen the Justin Jeffersons, the okay. I've seen the Devonte Adams. The I've seen the um, uh, what's that boy from Houston that left and went to, to Arizona? I can't remember his name. I've seen Hopkins. Yeah, Hopkins. But he's not a tight end. He's a wide receiver. I've seen a lot of these great. No, 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 no. I've seen a lot of these great wide receivers that aren't going to the Super Bowl, right? I mean, Julio Jones did now, and he's with, with, with of course, uh, 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 down in Tampa Bay now, but. I don't necessarily see all these great overpaid wide receivers in the Super Bowl. Here's the other thing I don't see, too. The Cowboys last year, we did a lot of three wideouts. And I'm going to say this. This is a long, this is a long mad theory. Shout out to Angel. Boom. Take the money out. All my meds it. kicked in, by the way. My meds kicked in. I feel better here. Okay. The, the, the stuff got to my sinuses. I was feeling bad earlier. I was feeling really bad, but I'm feeling good now. Okay, so you're getting all the energy that I didn't have today right now. We're excited, but here's my theory. Okay, now listen. If you look at the Dallas Cowboys, and I was talking about this with Brother Ross. And by the way, Brother Ross, tomorrow tomorrow night, we're going to start at about 7, 7.30, our live stream for our first draft, fantasy draft. Tomorrow night, live, here, here, okay? Yeah, fantasy football, I'm doing I know I'm doing it. Fantasy football is ruined regular football, but that's beside the, beside the case. Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? I don't do I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy you're here, man. I'm happy. My boy, my boy is back. Okay, but listen. But, hey, hey, at least you got a taste of what's going to be like when I move. Okay. Now, <laughs> listen to this for a second here. Last year, last year, it was the tale of two seasons. You know, like the book of Tale of Two Cities. Okay, but but it was the Cowboys season. Philip Vance, up, shout out, man. Okay. The first half of the season... The Dallas Cowboys offense was literally lights out. Okay? First four games of the season, Zeke Elliott averaged 5.3 yards a carry. Even through the first eight, he averaged 4.8 with a tour PCL for four games. Now, what happened after those first eight games? I'm going to tell you a couple of things happened. A couple of things happened. One, Blake Jarwin ended up getting his leg hurt, I think, week six. He was a great blocking tight end. During that time, during those eight games of the season, the Dallas Cowboys were on pace to do something 
that nobody had ever done in football, and that was having five guys on pace to go over a thousand yards. Zeke was on pace to go over a thousand. Tony Pollard was on pace to go over a thousand. Dalton Schultz was on pace to catch a thousand yards catching Amari Cooper as well as CeeDee Lamb. Nobody's ever had five people there, but we were in a position to do that last year. What happened? Like I said, Dalton Schultz got hurt. That was the first thing, which made it harder to do 12 personnel. Second thing that happened, Tyron Smith got hurt. Lyle Collins gets inserted now for Terrence Steele. Terrence Steele goes to the other side. Offensive line is jumbled. But even more so, here's the thing that really changed everything for the offense last year. First half of the year, we did a lot of 12 personnel. And everybody was healthy. Uh, well, no, not everybody was. Not everybody was. We did a lot of 12 <laughs> personnel, which dictates having two wide receivers. We had CD. We had Amari. But then, then, and then, yes, and then Michael Gallup comes back. Kellen Moore reverts back to Boise State, three wideouts. It's now it's like, oh, we got Michael Gallup. Oh, we got CeeDee Lamb. Oh, we got Amari Cooper. We need to play these guys. That's right. And what happened? You got away from 12 personnel. That reminds, you got away from running the ball as much. That reminds me of Jason Garrett. That is. Because of Des Bryant. Always throwing the ball to Des Bryant. So we were doing more 12 personnel because Michael Gallup was out, and it was effective. That was the most effective grouping of offense that we had for the team last year. 60% of the time was the success rate. Higher than anything else. Higher than three person, I mean, than three wide receivers. And I watched, to my delight, I literally was like, no, the light bulb has come on for Kellen Moore. It better because this might be his last season. <coughs> they did a drive with nothing but 12 personnel. They ate up the clock. They went 69 yards. They ran the football like eight yards a chunk because they had two extra guys to block. They sucked people in, and then they brought Turpin on the outside. And then you got, Boom. Then you got Smith. He picked up like yeah, seven, eight yards. You got Smith helping to open holes. Yeah, you had Smith, <laughs> right, because they were road grading. Smith. Okay, they were road grading, right? And after they started doing that, because now the defense is saying, shit, they got seven guys out there blocking. We got to get up off our horse and get up field so we can get to the point of attack. And you know what they do? 20-yard pass. Cooper Rush, 20-yard pass to Jalen Tolbert. And now they're like, oh, shit. What do we do? They've been able to run between the tackles. Now they didn't run outside. Now they're going to go on across the grain to Jalen Tolbert. Send me call We, we, we got to cover the – wait, wait, wait. We got to cover the whole field now. Hey, send me a couple of – We got to cover too. the whole field. The so then night. what do they do? Then they start running off tackle. And they did, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Tyler Smith, he is not, thank God, Connor Williams. Okay. Or Jordan see, Davis. See, see, look, look I, I, say, Davis. I say Turpin, that boy is fast. That boy is fast. I say Turpin, da, I mean, uh, excuse me, Smith, that boy can kick some ass. He'll that, open that, the hole. Oh, no, look. Open and hold. It was, okay, literally, it was a thing of beauty on that drive because uh, not not only that, uh, Fornick, Fornick, Fornick as the center. Okay, th okay, look, look, okay, let, let me, let me, say, okay, here, here, here's Fornick. He's snapping the ball to, to the quarterback, right? You got right here, you got Tyler Smith, okay? Right in front of him, okay, shaded. Okay, when I say shaded, that means not that you're shady and like you're crooked. Shaded means you're a little bit shifted to the outside. So they had the tackle was shaded out there on the outside eye of Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith steps out there, right? You end up having Fornuck kind of hit the guy a little bit in the shoulder, okay? And not a cheap shot like they did with uh, my, my man in the Giants where, where he cut him low, okay? That, that shit was bad. That shit was bad against my man, the, 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 the number five pick, okay? That was some dirty shit. We, we used to do that all the time when we were growing up because it was legal, but that shit's illegal now. But anyway, Tyler Smith, with his big ass, 
his big wide ass, swung that ass right on around and got his ass between the point of attack and the defender and the running back went clear off that ass. And that center who gave that tackle a nudge, he goes up and he delivers the blow on the linebacker and smack dab, damn it, they pick up like 10 yards. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, you know, you, you can't stop them. You can only hope to contain them. But you're not containing 12 personnel. There's so many different things you can do with it. We end up having two tight ends, one on each side, right? We had two tight ends together, one shifted back, right? Right, 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 right. Then we had Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson, you know, he only got two passes in the game. But check this out 14 and a half yards per reception. That boy can catch. That boy can, can, can block. Okay, right, 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 right. <laughs> so now, listen. This is where the shit just like blew my mind. I mean, it literally blew my fucking mind. Mike, you know what blew my mind? Check this out. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Check, you know, no, you know, no, 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 no. What blew my mind? What? We finally had a lane for the running back to run through. Well, th that's because it's 12 personnel. You got two more blockers out there. Yeah. Two. Not one, but two more blockers. And we, and how many, okay. pick, but, but how wait, many wait, picks wait. did we give up for Smith? Here. <laughs> oh, we didn't give up as much for Tyler Smith as the Eagles gave up to get Jordan <laughs> Davis. <slow>. Mr. <gasps> Jordan Davis is breathing harder than I am right now. <laughs> this is Jordan Davis after two plays. <laughs> okay, see, now I'm, I'm getting winded. But seriously. That, that goes back this to the position then. This was literally, I'm like... Okay, Kellen Moore has been abducted by, 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 by aliens or something or other. They must have, like, anal probed his head or something or other and put some knowledge or in maybe Mike because he talks this sense was to crazy. This was crazy. We had two tight ends to the left, both wide receivers tight. I mean, tight, tight. Jalen Tober, and, and I'm not sure who the other one was, but both receivers were tight. This looked like this was fourth down and six inches, and we're just going to run down your throat, right? That's what you thought when you saw Randy, this. Sorry. Randy, Randy, Randy. Oh. Take the money out. You, you oh, saw man. this, and you were like, what are they doing? It's short yardage. Are you kidding me? You know, this we were like on, on like the 10-yard line or something like that, right? But the design of this was so freaking amazing. This is exactly called uh, where you set up the defense. The defense doesn't know what's coming to them. If you watch my video that I did on this, it, it, I'll go through every play on that drive, and you will be like, damn, that shit's crazy. Because most of you don't understand the games that are played on the line. But here's what happened in the play. You got Kellen Moore under center. You got the tight ends tight. You got the running, I mean, the wide receivers in here tight too, right? They hike the ball. Kellen Moore goes back like it's a dive, like he's going to hand the football off, right? But here's what happens. If you watch the linebackers and the safeties who have been getting eaten up on the run, they're coming to the line of scrimmage. They're getting in there. We're going we're gonna to stop that run. We're going to stop it. Jalen Tolbert goes up three yards and goes straight across a skinny post to the corner of the end zone. And you see everybody get sucked in. The cornerback is actually on his outside trying to now catch up. He's trailing. He is wide open. And you have Cooper Rush pull the ball in, okay? It's called a bootleg. There's a jackass out there who keeps making videos about me, and he did another one today, and I was trying to explain a bootleg. Bootleg for the term is bootleg was it was a false leg. Okay. A guy who's got like a half leg and they would put liquor in it back during prohibition. Okay. You called it a bootleg play because you want them to basically you're trying to hide the ball between your side. Okay. And that's where we called it a bootleg. Okay. So the quarterback is going to go and loop around the other way, but everybody gets sucked in because they think it is a run. It's called play action. It was done perfectly. The only problem with it was Jalen Tolbert didn't drag his foot. He didn't get the you know toe tap swag there, and he was right on the line. But execution wise, that was like the light bulb went on, and that was like everything that I've been talking about. Why you want to use twelve personnel was right there. It was incredible to see that. And see, here's the thing. You know, my boy, Philly 500, uh, you know, I, I'm going to trigger Eagle fans. I'm going to trigger Eagle fans because, well, I enjoy doing it. I, I quite frankly, I enjoy. And, and you'll notice something. Yeah, Have you noticed something here? Have you guys seen any Eagle fans today? 
Have you seen any Eagle fans in the chat today? I mean, Philip Hunter was cussing out Jordan Davis um, the other night. That, my <laughs> friends, is cockroaches. Cockroach. That, my friends, are fair weather fans because you know they ride us when we look bad. They were all here, weren't they, last week? Oh, man. Uh oh. Jordan. Da 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 Damn, Gina. What's up, Gina? They were all in here last week talking about Mike McCarthy's ass. Your team sucks. They ain't here today, are they? Jordan Davis looks disappointed. They ain't here right now. Jordan Davis looks okay. sorry. So here's the funny thing. They keep telling us Zeke Elliott's washed, right? Um, if we could open holes. Well, 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 no, no, no. They have been talking about <laughs> Zeke Elliott. 